day five, six, seven day, God knows what of this uh, motorcycle endeavor. Still looks sad with no engine, but that's gonna change soon. Hey. Because I took this Clark, hey, I took this Clark gun, which was so annoying to sand with, and I made this bit right here to connect it to a nebulizer tank. And this, if this works, it, it's life changing, isn't it? result of five minutes seven minutes of blasting genius genius today is a super happy turn of events let me introduce you to this is Dolores Dolores is my donor bike which has an engine in pretty nice shape which I'm still going to dismantle to clean because I don't want that happening again and I can just take parts from this and make a Dolores and Eve combo the best parts of that it's got these shoes here these two are in perfect nick so I'll I have two that are perfect also, so I'm gonna combine everything and make a nice, but look at this frame, like the swivel arm, it's in really good shape, so I'm gonna use this, and hey, hey, this is the new one, this is the main stand, that is still black and it's all not rusty, the, night, the side stand also, it's in really good shape. The radiator, I was glad that it just doesn't have these little holes that I have. But somebody knocked it here, so I don't know if I can fix that. I need something to grab and pull without destroying it. That might be hard. It also has some knocks here, but that's fixable. Yeah, but look at this. It's all nice and black. Uh, I'll have to cover these holes and pressure wash it. See the guy had the same issue because there's some silicone here. Dude, so nice. There's no rust on this. Sick. And these are good nick. They've been cleaned. Or so it seems. <laughs> Sick. And I'll have parts. So what I'm planning to do is use this engine as it is after I clean it and my pistons and parts from my engine because my engine is run lower mileage than this one this has got 25,000 kilometers mine's got only 11 in this look just needs a bit of paint and that's that yeah so I'll keep my spare parts as spare parts Today has been a bit of a, an organizing day. Uh, I had to make more shelves because if I'll have two motorcycles dismantled, I'm gonna need a lot more shelves. So that's the old engine, and these are the bits that I think I'm not gonna use, including the sandblasted bits because this engine here looks really nice. Like. The white stuff that you see here, is, that's just dry oil that, that comes off with like a proper washing. And if it's on the inside as good as it is on the outside, then this is golden, man. 
Uh, tomorrow, what I'll try and do is uh, start taking the cylinder head out, check out all the clearances, take the cams out, um, then take the head out, check the valves, clean them, put it back together again. Probably taking this, I'll take the cylinder out also, and then all this engine will come out of this bike it will sit here somewhere, I moved that drill so I can have more table space got like a almost two meters of a table and some of this shelf and some space here this is the space with the parts that I'm can't see with the stuff that I'm gonna actually use on the Symbio's bike. But look at this headlight, everything's black and nice and no rusted and shit like that. Even the that's the horn. It's all nice. Yeah man. It's another day. I don't know which day. It is a day. Oh, this GoPro is frozen. Uh, it's beginning to get better now. What I'm gonna do now is take from this is Eve, this is Dolores. So I'm gonna take from Eve, I'm gonna strip Eve down to her bare skin. And then, yeah, so I'll take the forks out, the wheel, this wing, the other wheel, and the rear shocker absorber and the rear arm basically just leave the frame then sandblast the frame get it ready make these nicer because they're hideous this one has actually it's got tiny little holes so I might have to might have to fix that get rid of whatever this is and stuff and then sandblast it get it ready for painting and then take the engine of Dolores part by part start fixing whatever needs fixing paint wise and stuff and then install it on the freshly painted frame of Eve this is the pile that I'm not going to use, this is the pile that I will use. This tank has some damage here and on the other side, but it's the colors are nicer. And see how this is, this is all rusty here. This one seems to be really good down there and on the inside. So I might use this tank instead of the original tank. Cool. So what I'm doing now is taking the forks out. 14 mil bolt and nut. There's one here, one there. And then 14 mil, 14 mil. And then these forks should just drop. For now, I'm not. I'm leaving the brake on. For now, until I decide to paint uh, this front fork, I need to open it anyway to change some. Um, not the seals, the other things. The the Teflon bits there's one that goes on this and one that slides on the outer hand and they both have some Teflon and that Teflon is kinda wrecked because I wrecked it but now I can get it from Dolores I can get all the parts from Dolores uh, the next thing that I'll remove 14 mil and Allen key so they, these can go off and then I'll take out the central hub that's what it's called and then move to the rear ok 
Okay, so for for the top part of the fork hub, there's this a uh, big screw, big bolt. It's a 20 mil, 21, 22 mil. Yeah, that's 22 mil bolt. It goes in here, and it actually threads in this shaft right here. I used to have a a wrench for this, but I'm just gonna use a pump wrench to take this out, take this shaft out. And then inside there, there will be some ball bearings, some ball bearings. Hopefully they're not the old school ones that the balls fall off, because that would suck. Okay, next, these are the radiator bolts. I used a adjustable wrench to get them out. It's kind of fiddly, especially if they're rusty. And then this one here, going back to the hub, this one, it's a 10 mil bolt and nut that goes here. They'll all be in the same bag. These will be in a separate bag. This is gonna be there. Happy days. This one actually comes out by hand. Brilliant. There it looks, here's how it is. It's got an indentation here that goes into this plastic part. Oh, and that's the bearing, it looks so nice. No. Okay. It really does look like it's seen better days. Ah, the good part is this is a dirty Vaseline. So it kept all the dust out. All right. Yeah, so like I was afraid of, this bearing might be one of those ball bearings that just fall off. Mystery solved, this is not threaded, it's just a washer. And another mystery solved is the annoying ball bearing with actual balls. So, I've checked, uh, there's uh, the annoying balls here also, so they're gonna fall off. Because I'm supporting this with uh, with this stand, I'll have to bring my jack stand and actually put a plank on it and support the frame from underneath. Because I'll be removing both these uh, stands and these balls will go flying off. So there's probably going to be a lot of cursing, hopefully I'm not going to lose them, the floor is pretty clean, yeah. So yeah, let's do the jack stamp thing. I'm getting closer to fucking sandblasting this mother. And then because it's Sunday I can't go and buy primer, because it's a pandemic I can't even go and fucking fucking buy a thing <laughs> so I have to order it so it's probably gonna get here Monday hopefully or I'll just find one of those neighborhood shops that sell primers the thing is I would like to have a zinc primer because that's more durable and I would rather wait for the primer honestly so if I have to wait I'll Sandblast this, wash the out of it, and then start with the engine on Dolores and dismantle it and put it on the bench. So then I prepare everything. So when it comes to mounting, I have everything prepared so I can just put the bike back, start it, oh, go for a ride, man. Oh, wait, I can't do that either, but I can start it. I made myself a custom plank. This hole, you remember this hole? It goes straight in there. Now this goes like that, and it's as safe as a workshop made in two minutes thing can be. Right. Holding my hand here, so the balls don't fall off. 
but eventually yeah. we would have courage if we are mm -hmm. unwavering in our effort, we will, in the end, find a packet of spaghetti in a... This, for example... I don't know if you can see them. They're in there. Here it is. I'm pretty sure I didn't lose any balls. So there's one, two, 18 balls per side. Okay, next, the shop assembly. There's a giant bolt here and a smaller bolt here. It looks 14, 17. And this looks like a 19 or something. And it's like a 20, 21. Uh, one thing that I'm concerned about when I remove one of these, shit might go flying because of the spring. Now I'm pretty sure you have to de detention, detention the, the spring first. So I'm gonna try and find a way to do that. Although it sits on a rest here. And then. Yeah, that's strange. This, um, this preload is on zero, on minimum. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's the. Maybe that's the thing. Yeah, I don't see anything to loosen the spring up. So I'm just gonna take this bolt off first. Uh, correction, this is a 19 mil. No. I didn't have to hold it from the other side. Probably because the shock is pressing on it. That should be a 17 mil. I'll, I'll try and take it out, although I don't think I will be able to. Guess what? It's coming out. This is surprising. I'll probably have to push it from this side. Uh, it doesn't come off. It does come off with tapping with a little hammer. Well, I wonder if. I think I need to release this first to take the tension off. I think that's the purpose of this. Four, 14 mil nuts. Yeah, impossible is um, the word to describe this. WD40. After a little effort, I tried to take, I succeeded in removing this. And it seems this is the purpose of it. Takes the pressure out, now the spring comes back. You kind of unthread it from the wherever it's stuck. I'm extremely curious. Maybe... Oh yeah. When you put it back, you just lift the frame. Ah, sweet. See, because the thing swivels, so you just lift the frame like that. Alright, and after doing that, removing this big bolt should be a breeze. I think I might have to move the jack stand on the center so I actually sustain the weight of the frame. Yeah, I'll do that first. Yes, this needs to be met at stage two, level B of the nice third epoch of the Labour leadership. As party members have begun voting for the winners being announced, Rebecca Longbay... This is one of them washers the from the shop. The indentation goes in the shop observer. This is the ball. Or the nut. 14 mil ball. This one. <laughs> Probably another washer on the other side. Washer. 
To remove this 14 mil, this side 17 mil, that side. So that's like this. It's the same. I don't know where the screw is here. Probably at the back. Hopefully at the back. Uh, the other screw here that you can't see, but believe me, this one it's a 12 mil. And now with this thing off, the arm should go. Not to self. The chain, if it doesn't have a quick release with that belt, and I love it, it goes around this arm, like that. Officially I've dismantled this bike to Atom. So this is the main one, then that's the one at the bottom of the shock. And this is the one that holds the engine mounts also. There's the frame on the sandblasting table. And I'm just gonna get busy. It's getting there. Check this out. So this needs to be like that. Check this one out, man. Beautiful. End of the day. The frame is there. I did try something yesterday. So sandblasting, I think, works for small parts or flatter parts. You know? Or bigger parts. But for the frame, which has a lot of corners and joints and round pipes it's not really ideal what i tried is this thing fuel tech which is supposed to be magically removing paint it did all this paint removal here comes from the spray especially this but it's not fast enough and uh, i always think there should be a better way yeah look this peel is from the spray so I found a better way, there is a spongy disc, like a hard sponge that you can put on the angle grinder and this removes the paint and rust and leaves the metal like super shiny. Um, so I'll do the majority of the frame with that and the corners joints and shit like that I'll do them with the sandblasting. But because I don't want sand in my head and hair and nose and ears and fucking even in my panties I had sand what I'm gonna do is combine this welding mask with this pillowcase to make a sandblasting mask that so would go like a hood all over my head so I don't get sand everywhere It's almost done, I only have like a hard to reach spot to sand. So my ingredients are this pillowcase which I've already cut on the length, like so, and my welding mask. I think I'll take this off for now and put it back after that. The alternative to this is buying a proper sandblasting mask which is somewhere in the vicinity of 70 to 100 pounds. I don't think I'll do that. And the result is... Just this is open here and here. But I think it's no problem. I think it's way better. If you can still hear me, yeah. I'm starting this clip with potentially the best invention ever. This thing might be life changing. I saw it on a guy's clip on YouTube. Really nice. You put it here. 
like that. And yeah, man. In the in the heat of the moment, I got super excited because I finished this. Uh, I forgot to record, but I'll tell you what I did off camera. The secrets. Okay, so finish sandblasting, air it out with a compressor, then I put WD-40 on all of it, wire brush on the drill, wherever I saw any rust or something, Hold on. and then uh, go again with WD-40 and a, a cloth, clean it up nice. And then I've put some white spirit in one of these after I washed it, sprayed all of it, cleaned it with a clean cloth, that's the clean cloth, it's still clean. <laughs> if it's uh, not too dirty it means you did your prep, prep, prep work right. And now primer mother. Yeah man.